Okay, so um, we are we are doing the basic principles of food preservation this morning, and uh, later this afternoon we have the um, baking science or bakery science. Okay, so I have a quick a few questions from you. Have you done any type of food preservation your entire life? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what? Atara. 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 Okay. Everybody has done uh, the has been doing atara here. No. Trying it at home or producing as a business. At home. Okay. Anybody who has attempted to do a uh, beer at home? Nobody. Vinegar. Okay. Wine. 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 Yes. Okay. From what? From what food? Banana. Pineapple. Banana. Okay. Good. So basically, all of you have an idea what food preservation is. So I would expect a uh, a more participative uh, crowd this morning. Probably more participative, participative than uh, the class uh, I had with the uh, Miss Mikmik before. No? <laughs> okay, so before we, do, we, we, before we proceed with basics of food preservation, we first tackle what is food spoilage. Because it would lead us to, to the reasons why we do food preservation. So let's, let's, do, uh, let's, let's tackle first food spoilage. Can you give me examples of food spoilage? Anybody from the front? Yes, okay. Ginaamag na bread or moldy bread. What else? Gabukal-bukal na? Nga gatas. Foamy milk? Or curdling of milk? Yes. What else? Bad smell of? Foul odor of? Food. Okay. Yes? Yes, sir? Kicking of powdered Kicking products. Of powdered products. Yes. Very technical. Kicking of powdered products. What else? Birthday niya mo pang What else? Okay. Can I ask you a question? What's the water spoil? That's water spoil. Who says yes? Yes. Who says no? Sabihin ka po yun na ito pa. Not sure. Not sure. Distilled water? May expiration ng distilled water? Summit, that summit bottle is distilled water, is it? Natural. Do we have absolute here? Absolute, that's distilled, right? Yes. yes. Can you take a look if that's a, it has an expiration date or best before date? Is it expiration or best before? Expiration. So does it spoil? Nag-spoil ang water? Yes. Hindi ko sila convinced. Does it? No. Okay, let's go back to the question afterwards. No, before, when we tackle uh, food spoilage. Another question. Was a, I, I saw someone with a cupcake here or din tao na niya. Ah, ano? Mayo lang mo din tao. Okay. Just by looking at this bread, can you tell if, if it has already spoiled or not? Yes. Sito ang itsura niya? Okay pa siya. Okay pa siya. Pero kung hindi mo siya matouch and hindi mo siya masmell, would you know if this is spoiled already or not? No. So there are indications of spoilage, right? Yes. For example, on the bread, what might indicate that it has already spoiled? Presence of molds, yes. This, this one, okay. Presence of molds, what else? This color, yes. Odor. Kung simutan mo siya, 
sa physical na odor. Ano ang possible type of odor? Panos odor? Ano? <laughs> ano dito ba? Sour smell? Sour smell or some people like my call it fermentative smell? Already? But not all fermentative smell is spoilage. Right? Right? Okay. So let's go to, to spoilage first. Okay. 
So food must be considered spoiled if it is contaminated with pathogenic microorganisms or various poisonous agents such as pesticides, heavy metals, etc. So we will discuss different types of food spoilage. What are the causes? So you will see here, I have given you examples of causes of spoilage. What causes the moldy uh, presence in fruits and vegetables? Or mostly fruits, molds. What causes those spots on mangoes? People from Liberas might be, be very familiar with this picture. Or for those who go to the markets and buy mangoes, for example, you can see mangoes that are infected with these black spots. It's an early sign of spoilage. Bananas. Although some of you who, who are fond of making uh, banana bread would go for this type of bananas that has already black spots in them. What else? Well, milk, curdling or foul smell of milk indicates spoilage. Molds in bread and in meat. The early signs of spoilage are foul smell, discoloration, greenish discoloration, usually on the surface of the meat. So the causes of spoilage are first growth and activity of microorganisms. Fresh food, processed food, when they are exposed to the environment or to, to an environment that is um, susceptible, that encourages their growth, microorganisms will rapidly multiply and eventually cause the spoilage of the food. Okay. So, for example, your water bottle, um, if it's unopened, it has an expiration date, right? So if that absolute uh, bottle is not yet open. It has an expiration date which is on? Ang to 2018, is it? 2018. But once it is open, what happens to the water inside? It's, it's already exposed to the air outside the bottle. What else? If you drink from the bottle, microorganisms from your mouth goes into the bottle and eventually comes into contact with your water. So it initiates the it initiates the, the rapid spoilage of, of food. Okay? So you have growth and activity of microorganisms. So if you have bacteria, yeast, and molds, these are the three um, types of microorganisms that cause food spoilage. Some of them produce enzymes that decompose various con constituents of your food products. You also have insects, which can infest your mostly your fresh produce, causing it to spoil. What are examples of insects that cause spoilage of fresh produce? When you say fresh produce, what? Fresh commodities. Fresh products, not yet processed. Flies. Is that sorry? Flies. Flies, yes. Please. So mangoes, very, very, ano, very popular si, uh, ano tawag siya? Ang nagapos sa, ang naga, don't fly yet, sura, tapos nagatusok siya sa mangga. Two flies, yes. So mostly, your insect initiates the cause of, of spoilage of the product. So when the food fly um, lays the, the egg on the fresh produce, now the eggs, well, they grow on their stages and then eventually produce flies as well. So, wala na. na, 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 rat, na usually, sometimes also these insects carry microorganisms themselves, which can initiate spoilage of your fresh produce. You also have enzyme activity. Action of enzymes found inherently in plant or animal tissues start the decomposition of various food components after death of plant or animal. So inherently, your fresh produce have enzymes in them that can initiate spoilage or can cause spoilage of products. For example, when you cut your banana, what happens after 30 minutes if you left it on the table? Naga ito or naga brown siya. Um, if you are fond of making fruit salad, for example, you cut apples, for example, or yes, potatoes. What happens after 30 minutes? You left, you expose them in the air. You know, they become brown. Not unless you put them in what? Water or acid. Or sometimes you put them on the juice of the fruit cocktail. 
because that's acidic, right? So you dig it into the you actually prevent um, you cover the surface area of the of the food and you prevent oxidation, which what initiates the, the spoilage of the of the part. Who would want to eat brown apples, diba? Or who would want to eat brown bananas na? So the brown you initiate it with spoilage already. Because you don't want to consume it. But you also have chemical reactions. These are reactions that are not catalyzed by enzymes. For example, oxidation of fat. Um, if you are familiar with um, jerk, beef jerky, familiar with beef jerkies, um, most of the beef jerky, although beef shop uh, incorporated um, um, fat with the, with the lean portions, um, the spoilage of beef jerky is due to fat oxidation. Because it has very low moisture content, but it's dry. Shot, it's dry shot. Um, usually causes of, of um, products high in fat, but very low in moisture content, would be fat oxidation. May, may rancid odor na siya afterwards. And that is the, the indication of spoilage already. Okay. But among the causes of spoilage, so I have mentioned what I have mentioned. What are the causes of spoilage? Insects. <coughs> among the four, which is the most dangerous or deadly? Microorganism. Right? Because if you eat, for example, brown apples or brown bananas, will you die? No. no. Probably a little bit of uh, stomach ache if you're sensitive enough. Or if you've eaten something, um, a fruit, for example, that has been infested by an insect, may ulud siya. Will you die? No. no. Manami lang yung motivo. Diba? <laughs> Nabali lang mga kakakon of fruit na may, may, may ulod or may sumbay, ganami yung motivo. But, if you eat something that has microorganisms in them, especially if pathogenic siya, or even non-pathogenic but in very, very high numbers, what can happen to you? Can you possibly die? Yes, you can possibly die. You can possibly die. But another type of, of spoil, uh, spoilage of products, which is also deadly, but nevertheless, ang, ang iyang um, ng, uh, possibility of occurring is very rare, is spoilage due to chemical contamination, which can be poisons, for example. Um, if you still remember the um, incident about uh, tea, milk tea, not the kasi. The kasi is, uh, they say, I don't know the findings officially, but they say it's microbial. Is it microbial um, um, source or origin? There was another one in Manila. Nga napatay ang owner, pag ang nagtao. Is it the, the, the girl or the boy? Di ba? Girl daw napatay. Pag ang owner. Owner mismo sa store. And they say it was poison. Um, you can, sometimes you can, by just going through the news, um, if you are keen enough, you can guess already the, the source of the, the culprit you know, for the, the food illness. Because if it's chemical, readily it will show. Pag consume niya, di ba, ang, ang, based on these reports, ang hindi consume ang milk tea, nagula niya baba. Then itong basya tayo. Immediate ang effect. Because chemical siya. Pag microbial, sometimes it can last up to five days ang incubation sa microorganism in your body. And you will show um, symptoms of food illness five days after. And nalipat ka na kung anong yung taon. Or it can be probably maximum of, a minimum of six hours or four hours after consumption. Pero not immediate. So if it's immediate, usually the culprit is chemical. But very rare. Very rare. Very rare ang, ang food illness that are caused by um, um, poison or chemical emission. Mostly, ang food illness natin in the Philippines is caused by microbial, microorganisms. Okay. So what are the factors affecting spoilage? We say it's being caused by microorganisms. The most deadly, we say it might be caused by enzymes, action of chemicals, action of insects, for example. But what are the factors affecting it? What are the factors that make microorganisms spoil food faster, for example? 
So we have intrinsic and extrinsic factors, meaning intrinsic factors, meaning they are inherent in the food. Or in extrinsic factors, external to the food. Or surrounding the food itself. Surrounding the food product. Okay. When we talk about intrinsic factors, number one on the list is hydrogen concentration or pH of the food product. You notice, no? If I have juice, later on, if this spoils, ano ang spoilage? Ano ang, ang, ang indication ng spoilage? Bubbles? This is uh, citrus based food. What do you think? Wala kang ma-experience sini nga nag-spoil siya? Maybe because wala siya galugay nung naubo siya dahil. Yes. The discolor. Yes, can possibly be. Yes. The discolor siya. But what else? Bubbly. Yes. If it's acidic, mostly fruit products or citrus products, even if it is a process, anong cause ng spoilage? Yeah, you think. If you are trying to look at spoilage of, for example, uh, calamansi. Calamansi. If you buy calamansi from the market, you are not able to. You buy what you you bought one kilo, and then you were not able to use it for a week. You just left it in your basket, basket in the kitchen. What happens to the calamansi? Presence of the brown side. Yes, nagasprey brown side. What else? Presence of molds. Molds. Because it says there, most bacteria grow best at neutral or weakly alkaline pH, usually between 6.8 and 7.5. Bacteria. So your bacteria grow in alkaline condition, while your yeast and molds grow in the acidic conditions. So that's why most of your acidic-based food products, juices for example, that are very high in acid, or citrus product, products or fruit products in general that are that are high in the, the, the source of spoilage is usually yeast or molds. But the, although some bacteria can grow within a narrow pH range of 4.5 and 9.0, example your salmonella. And other microorganisms there, yeast and molds, and some bacteria grow within a wide pH range. Molds grow between 1.5, which is very acidic, or there are very special molds that can grow as far as 11.0 which is totally on the alkaline side. While these grow between 1.5 and 8.5. But if you go into the full scale of the pH meter, you will see that most of your yeast and molds will grow in optimum conditions of, in, in, in low pH conditions, while your microorganisms would grow on the alkaline conditions. So let's check some of the pH values of some of your food products. You can see there that most of your meat products coming from beef and chicken and fish. Sorry, not spelling an oyster. Okay. That's on the alkaline side. Meaning to say the source of spoilage, mostly of this type of food commodity, are what? Bacteria. Your milk is also on the alkaline side. Cheese, a little bit on the alkaline side. Look at your fruits. Less than 4.5. Mostly less than 3.5, which is on the acidic scale of your pH. So most of your fruits, especially those with very high, with very high acidity, the source of spoilage is moist. So your microorganisms that are able to grow in acidic environment or very low pH are called acidophilic microorganisms. And these microorganisms are able to grow at pH around 2.0. Your yeast and most, there you go, grow under acidic conditions. Other microorganisms prefer alkaline conditions. And most of your microorganisms are killed by acid or strong alkaline environment, except, except mycobacteria. 
Meaning to say, you can use what? You can use acid as as preservative. As preservative. Okay. Good. When we talk about microorganisms specific that are mostly causing diseases, you see, uh, you see there Escherichia. Sorry, another one. Escherichia coli. 4.4. The minimum is it can grow as low as 4.4 pH or 9.0. Uh, pH maximum. Amo nang yung growth range. But the, the optimum growth may be somewhere in the middle of that. But it can grow on those extreme conditions. Salmonella tayo e, 4.5 to 8.8. Your bacteria mostly 4 to 9. Moles around as low as 1.5 they can grow and these as low as 1.5. Okay? Question so far? Okay, we go to moisture content. When we talk about moisture content, and the moisture content, anybody? And the moisture content, water. What water? Water that is. What is water? Uh, moisture content? Amount of water present in food. The amount of water present in food. What is the moisture content of this? Juice is halos 100%? probably 90 to 100% water. So 90 to 100% moisture content. Okay? But when we talk about products that are very low in moisture content, what do you think are products that have very low moisture content? Dry products. Dry mangoes of Himaras, for example. Or what? Tuyo. Or dry kalkam. Kalkam. Fish, dry fish, for example. Those products have very low moisture content. So that's our concept of moisture content. And the effect of moisture is in terms of water activity. What do we mean by, let's discuss water activity later. But when we, when we just remember when we are trying to, to say about moisture content, moisture content is the amount of water in your food product or in your food commodity. But when we talk about water activity, water activity actually is the water that is available to your microorganisms. Not all water that is present or not all moisture content that is present in your food is available to microorganisms. For example, your dried mangoes, for example, may have a little bit of percentage of moisture content but very low water activity because some of the water particles are bounded to the cellular components of your food. That's why it's not available to your microorganisms. And in terms of water activity, um, raw meat and milk has very high water activity. So ang range levels of water activity is 0 to 1. So very moist products would have very high water activity as far as 0 0.99 to 1.0 and mostly fresh meat products or fresh commodities have very high moisture content. Luncheon meat, 0 0.95. Boiled ham, sliced bacon, 0 0.9. Dried grains, a little bit lower, 0 0.8. Why are we concerned about water activity levels? Because the growth of your microorganisms is being affected by the level of water activity in the food. The higher the water activity, the higher the amount of water available to your microorganisms. And pag higher ang available water activity, such as ang uh, microorganisms, no? they thrive well in your food, they, your food is in okay. Because your mi microorganisms multiply rapidly. Inhibition of growth occurs if the water activity for food is lower beyond an organism's minimum level of water activity that is necessary for growth. 
each of your microorganisms, for example, your bacteria, your yeast, and your molds, have um, a range of water activity where they, they grow well. Your bacteria, for example, grow at very high um, water activity levels. Your yeast and molds at lower water activity levels. So it would give you an idea if your food, for example, has water activity level of, let's say, 0 0.88, so you would think that microorganisms that have these um, water activity levels as their growth levels would be growing in your food. Of course, if you have food that has water activity level of 0 0.6, you would not expect what bacteria to grow if its optimum growth is 0 0.9. Okay? So your microorganisms have very minimum water activity requirements that support their growth in food. These are the water activity um, levels that support growth of these different types of microorganisms. Clostridium botulinum is a microorganism that grows well or is found in what type of product? Can okay. And it grows on 0 0.95 water activity. No mention kagi na lunch on meat, ano iyang water activity level? 0 point? Okay. Halo similar sila. So it can grow well. That's why it can mostly be found in canned foods because amo nang iyang water activity level. Bacillus cereus, Pseudomonas, so Salmonella, Staphylococcus, Penicillium. Around 9 to 9 or uh, 0 0.9 to 0 0.95 if you notice, most of those are pathogenic microorganisms. They grow well in high water activity food products. For those on the lower side, on the lower levels, you can mostly find presence of yeast or molds. What else? What are what else are the factors that affect spoilage of food? Nutrient content of the food product. The when we buy food products, are we looking at the nutrient content? Nutrient content or color of the packaging? <laughs> if you buy, for example, uh, orange juice, do you try to take a look at the nutrition facts, which cannot be seen sometimes by the naked eye because it's very small? Or you try to take a look at the brand or the price? The price. Practical. The price. So, kung naka-clear na siya, pagyo sila tanan niya, for example, 250 ml, the, small, the, the, the lower the price, the better to the eyes. Are you sure? Or do you take also into consideration color? Most people would neglect nutritional content. Unless you are very conscious of uh, your weight and uh, for, for example, for diabetics, conscious sila sa amount of sugar. Or for those who are high in cholesterol, conscious sila sa fats, saturated, unsaturated fats, which can be found in the nutritional facts of your of your food product. Because, well, I encourage you to take a look at nutri nutri nutritional facts because, of course, no, dapat we, we to take a look at the nutritional content of what we consume every day. And if we love nutrition, the microorganisms also love nutrients. If you love vitamin A, vitamin A, vitamin C, iron, which can be found in your food products, your microorganisms love them as well. In fact, they say that the needs of human beings are actually similar to the needs of microorganisms. They need air. They need nutrients. They need to be comfortable in their environment in order for them to reproduce. So if, there, if your food is very nutritious, what happens to your microorganisms that live there? They grow rapidly as well. They reproduce rapidly and causes your food to spoil early. There are various specific nutrients that help in microbial growth. Um, some of your microorganisms like protein very much or some of your microorganisms like fat very much. 
So most of your foods that are very nutritious are also very susceptible to, to spoilage. There are also an, um, antimicrobials present in your food. Some of them are inherent, meaning to say present talaga sa food, or some of them may be added to the food. If you're familiar with uh, If you are holding Minik Maid currently, there's potassium benzoate there, sodium benzoate. Try to take a look, citric acid. Some of them have, these compounds have antimicrobial um, actions on your food products. And they diminish the, the capacity of microorganisms to spoil your food. But there are food products that inherently have antimicrobials in them. And so it, well, because they have antimicrobials in them, they inhibit microorganisms. So for example, such inhibitors that are inherent are lactinine and anti-coliform factors in milk and lysozyme in eggs. So for example, that, that, that's the reason why they are encouraging breastfeeding, for example, because um, they say that a mother's milk has a lot of antimicrobials in them. In some cases, antimicrobial substances, chemical in nature, in some instances, you have biological structures. Physical properties of your food that inhibit the, the occurrence of microorganisms or bacteria, specifically. So some foods have biological structures that prevent microbial entry. For example, your meat has skin and other membranes that prevent microbial entry. Eggs have shell and inner membranes that prevent yolk and egg from white, from infection. Okay. Another factor that greatly affects spoilage of food is temperature. Anong ginaobra niyo usually to delay spoilage of food products? Gina refrigerate. Gina refrigerate. Based on experience, we usually experience that when food is left at normal room conditions, it easily spoils. Because what is our temperature usually? 25 to 30 during summertime, as high as 36 sometimes during summer, 38, yes. We will find that later on why during those times, food spoils faster. And usually you can see the trend if you are if you are plotting trends of microbial uh, of food poisoning or micro uh, illness food illness due to microbial growth for example from january to december you can see that during summertime the occurrence of, of of food illness due to what um microorganisms because mas rapid ang growth because of temperature Okay, the growth of microorganisms is affected by environmental temperatures. Various microorganisms are able to grow at certain temperatures but not on other temperatures. There are microorganisms that grow on very high temperature environment or very low temperature. We will discuss about that later. Bacteria can therefore be divided into different groups depending upon their optimum temperature for growth. When we talk about optimum um, conditions for growth, it is during that time that microorganisms can multiply. When we say growth range, meaning my minimum and maximum shock, it can still grow, for example, but it might not be able to multiply. But when we say optimum growth, or optimum conditions for growth, meaning to say they can rapidly multiply at that certain point. So for example, the growth range in terms of temperature of a microorganism is from 30 to 60, so it can grow as low as 30, it can grow as high as 60, or it can, it can survive, but it can rapidly multiply, for example, at 40 to 50, depending on the optimum temperature. So what are these types of microorganisms? You have psychrophilic microorganisms that grow best at about 20 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius in unfrozen media. So these are cold-loving microorganisms. So when your food is uh, frozen food, for example, or chiller food, or freezer, or sorry, refrigerated food, these are the types of microorganisms that you may expect to grow that can cause their spoilage. Those microorganisms that love low temperatures.
you also have mesophilic bacteria. These organisms grow between 25 to 40, with an optimum growth close to 37. So these are mostly what? Pathogenic microorganisms. Most of your pathogenic microorganisms are mesophilic bacteria. So imagine the dangers um, of tropical countries. Because most mesophilic microorganisms can thrive well on tropical countries. So they, and they are pathogenic, so they cause food illness. But mind you, microorganisms also adapt or evolve over the years. There are certain studies that find that microorganisms adapt to, to certain environments and they grow. There are certain instances where salmonella can be found to grow in products that are not that they can before they have not previously been found to grow. So naga adapt man sila sa ila environment. So none of your mesophilic bacteria are able to grow below five degrees Celsius or above forty five degrees Celsius. There are also warm or hot loving microorganisms. So these grows at 40, above 45 degrees Celsius, often their op optimum growth temperatures is between 50 and 70, so high temperatures. So if still there are dangers, if you are, for example, serving hot food, not very hot, not boiling, so around 70, 60 to 70, now there are still microorganisms that can cause its spoilage. So walang kawala. From chilled, from frozen, up to what, high temperature foods? Now, there are microorganisms that can thrive on them can, and can cause their spoilage. What's very special about thermophilic, so if we talk about mesophilic bacteria, the special about them is that most pathogenic bacteria are mesophilic bacteria. What's special about thermophilic naman niya is mostly thermophilic microorganisms are spore formers. What do we mean by spore formers? You create it, naga spread it, main spores, naga produce the spores, spores, spore formers siya. And these spore formers are usually, what? Not easily destroyed by food processing methods. So medyo ano sila, um, kumbaga, kung sa mga army, sila ang may shield, or may mas higher ang ila defense, mas goodlay sila patsyon. Kung, um, ani, ano na siya? Kung superpowers, may kung ano siya, kung anim, anime siya, may mga superpowers siya yan. Or kung Harry Potter fan ka, hindi siya muggle. Wizard siya yan. Hindi ka pretend lang siya nga muggle siya. So hindi siya easily ma mapatay sa mga, mga food preservation techniques because for former siya. Other types are, they form capsules around themselves. Wherein heat or as acid cannot easily penetrate. So they are able to survive and cause spoilage or eventually sickness to those who consume the food. But note that effect of temperature on microbial growth also depends upon other environmental conditions. So it can be affected by nutrient medium, nutrients present in your food, pH of the food, and water activity. Meaning to say there is an interplay of these factors that creates an environment for microorganisms to fully grow. Um, it would be another subject to this to, if it would be probably another day to discuss the interplaying of these factors. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the hurdle concept, wherein microorganisms grow from one, they need to overcome several hurdles. These hurdles are being created by different types of processing methods in order to, to kill your microorganisms. Milk, let's say for example, you have a microorganism present in this juice. You do not just kill it by pasteurization. If this undergoes pasteurization, you do not just kill it by pasteurization, right? Or the effect of heat or temperature. You also put antimicrobial compounds, like sodium benzoate, for example, or citric acid. What else? You pack it on, for example, a vacuum pack or a sealed bottle in order to inhibit air. So the interplay of factors, and it has very high acidity. So the interplay of these factors create hurdles for microorganisms, for them not to grow. Do pa yun nga runner ako sa hurdle nga run, di ba sa mga mga 
anong tawag, marathon when you when we when there are hurdles ang 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 runner ma-jump siya ani sa isa ka hurdle